Hey y'all, my name is Rich. Welcome to Hickory Sticks Woodworks. Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to start on the uh, Fisher's Flip Top Cart with a little bit of twist to it. Uh, I'm going to start out ripping down a couple of sheets for the, the top and the bottom and the two, two sides on this. Um, this if you haven't ever used these Craig jigs before for, for ripping and uh, cutting, cross cutting, I, I highly recommend them. These things are, are really good for making cr straight cuts on everything. So. Yeah, I highly recommend them. Okay, so we got all the sheet goods cut down so now we're just going to put a rabbit and dado on the bottom pieces and the two sides so we can get those put together real quick <laughs> And now I'll we'll add a little tight bond three waterproof glue and some screws and get the bottom part of this carcass put together. Yeah, so here we're just going to rip down a uh, four inch wide pieces for uh, the side shelves and the bottom casters to hold up and support everything.
So these casters I got on the bottom of this, I uh, bought them off of Amazon. I seen another YouTube video where somebody put them on something that they were working on, and I originally got them for my table saw. I ended up taking them off and put them back in the drawer and then decided to build this cart, so I figured I'd, I had them, so I'll use them for this, but they got a ratchet handle with a selector switch, and they're just a pain in the butt to get down on your hands and knees to raise them up and down, so yeah, I don't really recommend them at all. So here we're just making some braces for the one side to get some extra support on this side. We're not just relying on the shelf for the casters that it's mounted to in itself. Now we're just going to rip down a couple of 2 by 4s to an even width of 3 inches. Trying to take off the outside edges on each side of them and uh, make these for the top so we can get uh, room in there for the conduit that's going in and all the electronics. So I got the frame for the top all put together and you can see I got a receptacle box cut in there. I got three one and three eighths holes two on the side for the conduit and one for the wire to pass through to the receptacle box right there. So I went with the one inch rigid metal conduit. This is what we use in the electrical world for running wires through um, and one rigid T. And on the end of that, I got a three quarter to one inch RE reducing bushing and a fitting for the wire to, to connect to so it, it protects the wire from the end of the conduit so you don't have to worry about it rubbing on your wire and bearing through and somebody getting zapped. So you'll notice that the threading's on the conduit. One is a little longer than the other. The short one's a standard thread and I cut the other ones longer so that they would be able to go through the sheeting on the sides and to the uprights on the side so that I have room to get a lock nut on both sides of the top and both sides of the sheeting that are for the side supports. I chose to go with the receptacles on the outside that I can access so that way if uh, something ever happens to either one of my tools I don't have to take the whole top of this apart or one side panel off or anything like that to be able to get the tool off the cart and, and serviced or take it someplace where I, I need it. I don't have to take anything apart. I just unplug it, unscrew it, and away I go. So this wire is a 14-3 uh, uh, SO cord, 14 gauge, 3 conductor, hot neutral ground. We use it in the industry for extension cords and that kind of stuff. So I'm cutting a piece off here about 2 feet long to go from one receptacle box to the other with a jumper. And the, ones are the, the other one's coming from power. So I'll put a plug in on the other end and uh, power it up with that for both sides.
I'm not a big fan of the look of the 2x4, so I decided to wrap the outside of this with some, some plywood. I think it looks a lot nicer, a little cleaner. So putting this top in by myself actually worked out a whole lot better than I was expecting it to. It went together pretty easy and having that two inches of thread on those pipe worked out really good. Being able to put the lock nuts on there, I was able to adjust the sides in and out to exactly where I needed them to be. You'll, you'll see in a minute here I, when I do the adjustment on it just how, how well that worked out.
So here I'm just putting together another CGB for the cord and a one inch coupling that's going to go on the threads on one side where the cord comes out. Again, it protects the jacket of the cord so it's not rubbing against the conduit or the, the black water pipe that everybody else uses. This is, in my opinion, the appropriate way to, to do for your cord so you don't have to worry about it shortening out. You can see we got a couple of latches on there, one on each side, so we can latch her down when she's rolled over from one side to the other. We're gonna get the uh, planer put on here. It's pretty heavy. It's a rigid 13 inch, and then uh, we're gonna use some four inch by three eighths legs to anchor it down on top once we get it all squared up here. So here we're just nailing the uh, sander down with some uh, two inch deck screws, nothing real serious or it's pretty light, doesn't, doesn't take much to hold it down. If you made it this far into the video, I'd like to thank you for spending your time watching the video. I, I sure appreciate you guys uh, viewing this, uh, hopefully it'll help you guys out and deciding how to, how to build yours and uh, if you wouldn't mind doing a like and a subscribe maybe that would be uh, much appreciated too i sure would like to get this channel built up and uh, get it out to as many people as possible and that uh, would be pretty awesome so thank you very much again for spending your time watching my video i do appreciate it
throw the plugins on this. I went to single gang, single yoke because I don't want receptacle up there that something's not plugged into, filling up with dust and that kind of stuff. So maybe that was just the best way to go with a single hole, single plug in on both sides. So, and you can see that I got the cord underneath the the planer there. The cords are going to stay out of the way of everything. I got a board up there for the outfeed on this. I'm going to put an outfeed table on there and. Uh, I'd like to thank you all again for stopping by and spending your time with me, and we'll see you guys in the next one.